the easiest way of thinking about it is we won't get to net zero without space-based assets. I mean, it's as simple as that. What I think is really interesting now is as we start thinking about sustainability more broadly, those conversations we're having around sustainability Earth are actually now extending into how we think about sustainability of those orbital regimes we use for space as well. So it's becoming a, a far more inclusive and holistic view of what sustainability means and how we think about all those impacts of, of what we're having on the environment. And we have real, like, realize how dependent we are on it for the way we live our lives today. Um, and when you have that kind of dependency, I it's really important to understand how we can maintain that access to that environment so we can operate from it and, and keep doing the things that we, we do every day that, that space enables and space delivers for us. What I think now is we're starting to recognize is and how do we make sure that we're not littering and we're not cluttering up, which is where this this the, the, the debris debate and the debris conversation comes in. Um, and I think it's for me, it's it's only right that we're really raising this conversation because if we don't think about how we're going to sustain space, if we don't have that conversation around what we consider to be normal behaviors in space, then it could get to the point where we do start having an increased number of conjunctions or collisions between space assets because of the amount of debris. When that happens, then we can't access it. It's important that we can access space because of the things we want to do in space. And we know it's important for our communities as well because of the service it delivers. And it's only right that we in this community really think about the longevity of that, of that space domain and that space environment by putting in place the right measures for keeping it accessible and keeping it safe for us all to use. I think recently about the uh, OSIRIS-REx mission that we were involved with, where we did a close proximity operation with an asteroid to try and collect some of the material that asteroid took can be analyzed uh, back on Earth. And that should give us more insights into what's actually happening um, uh, in space, what are the what are the, the materials we might be able to use, what are the resources that exist there, and also give us insights into, into the sort of existence or, or the start of our own, our own universe. So those things are incredibly exciting for us. I think just the role that space plays, as we've just discussed in, in the climate crisis and how important it is to be able to have space to monitor what's happening to our planet. And through that, think about the right mitigations that we can put in place uh, to try and reduce the impact of that or, or find uh, mitigations for the impacts of that. So those things are really exciting. When you start thinking about space security, you've, you've got to think about the whole system. And it's really important that you don't just think about the particular platform or asset in space, but you think about the whole system that it's operating in. And in some ways, that, that is analogous when you think about some other areas of security as well. If you're thinking about you know, national infrastructure like um, railways, or you're thinking about the, the power grid, you've got to think about space the same way. Every section of that, of that whole ecosystem needs to be thought about. So everything from the cyber protection right the way through to space. But space does have one particular challenge, which of course is once you put an asset in space, it's very hard to then do anything with it. So you can't, when the threat changes, and when you get a new sort of threat coming out, you can't easily update it. And that's where we're starting to think about, OK, what is a, an adaptable on orbit system going to look like in the future? How can you have a platform or a satellite operating space that through its life, you can update some of the hardware and you can update some of the firmware? We're already seeing a lot of software defined systems, but we're now thinking about the next stage of that. How can you update some of the systems that are actually on board it? And how can you make sure that it's going to sustain beyond uh, its natural life? How can you think about refueling? How can you think about sustaining uh, that platform um, to make sure it is still relevant uh, no matter what the threat's coming? Space in itself does have a natural attraction for many people. Uh, I think it's very important that we make it very clear there are so many different things you do with space. You, you, we need space for, for climate monitoring. We're going to actually tackle the climate crisis. We need space. Um, some potentially even future uh, manufacturing could be taking place in space. These things are, are really quite exciting, quite different, I think, from how some people think about space as well. And maybe make it more accessible. I think that's important. People need to understand that space isn't just about astronauts, but we're doing some real things. I think we've got to attract them through that way. Uh, and then I think it's also important that everyone in this community, in this sector, does their bit to try and bring through that next that next generation of um, uh, engineers and space employees. The sort of things that we're doing, Lockheed Martin is making investments up in the Northeast, for example, uh, alongside Northumbria University, where we're putting in place um, a space skills and technology center. And the idea of that is we're gonna try and provide a gateway for people uh, to come through the education system and, and have the vocational skills that allow them to move into the space sector. We're also thinking about and, and this is something I think we need to do across the sector is how do we bring people in who possibly don't have those those um, direct skills yet? There's so many 
adjacent skills that could be relevant to space, but they haven't thought about it. They may be doing some technical jobs in a completely different sector and thinks that space is too too much of a, a hurdle for them to get in. How do we think about trying to bring some of those people in from other areas as well? Because this is a, a real uh, a collective challenge for us, and and it will be it will be a, a determinant for whether the UK can take a significant place in the global space sector. We we need that talent, and we need the talent to come through. We need the talent to come to the sector, and that will be the difference I think between whether we 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 take a a significant place within the global space sector.